Chicago, I know y'all thought y'all escaped this week. I know that y'all thought that y'all escaped this week, but y'all got to come to the front of the congregation because it's a lot going on in Chicago. First things first, Chicago crime is out of control. Did y'all hear about what happened at Wendy's? Did y'all hear about what happened on the street? Did y'all hear about that guy that got shot just standing up in his own home and just a random bullet hit him? Yeah, 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 that's what's happening in Chicago. So we got two different segments on Chicago today, all right? One of them is related to the to the violence that's happening, and we're going to get to that other part, right? They've been having some real bloody weekends, but it's been overshadowed by everything that's been going on. Diddy. Diddy. Cassandra said, and time, my potato salad clean. I wash watch each potato, too. All right. Okay. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. Uh, we're going to bring Chicago to the front of the congregation. I need y'all to know what's going on in that city. Uh, first and foremost... Apparently, somebody that work at Wendy's just got the breath knocked out of them. And we begin with breaking news. A Wendy's worker is rushed to the hospital after she was shot through the drive through window. It happened uh, in Chicago's West Chatham neighborhood. CBS 2's Muga Odigwe joins us live at the University of Chicago Hospital, where the woman is being treated right now. Mugo, what have we learned? Well, right now, it's still not clear what actually led up to the shooting, but the woman was doing her job when police say a man shot her and then took off. Listen to what we heard from a dispatcher moments after the shooting. Someone shot in the arm, a fender shot through the window. They were in a white SUV, gun pointed out of the driver's window, facing Wendy's window. Now take a look here. The glass at the Wendy's drive through window is not only shattered, but there is a bullet hole on it, too. There are also some shell casings on the ground from the shooting. This Wendy's is on 87th and South Lafayette in West Chatham. Chicago police say the shooting happened around 1 this morning. A 20-year-old woman was working the drive through when a man started arguing with her. That man then fired shots. The woman was hit That's in the crazy. arm, but she is expected to recover again. You arguing with a fast food worker at two at one o'clock in the morning, and then you just start shooting this out of the window. What in the heck is happening in Chicago? So the look, the little twenty-year-old girl is doing her job at Wendy's. Yo, I be feeling so sorry for the people that be working a late night shift sometimes. I'm not even outside in the streets at one o'clock in the morning. I ain't even gonna kid you. If DoorDash ain't delivering it. And you got to deliver it straight down to the bottom concierge. And then I'm going to come and get it after the DoorDash person say, uh, uh, hey, I delivered it. And then the concierge is going to call me up. And then I'm going to send my people down. And they're going to come and pick up the stuff. Yo, they're not even making $20 an hour, sister. This is Chicago. This ain't even, uh, this ain't California. Nope, this ain't California. This is Chicago. They're not even making close to $20 an hour. And she getting her muffin top peeled back. Meanwhile... On the other part of Chicago, you could be chilling in your living room on the south side. Chilling in your living room on the south side, and guess what can happen? Standing in the living room only to realize you've been struck by gunfire. That is what Chicago police say happened to a 57-year-old man in Morgan Park. CBS 2's Mugu Odigwe is at District 22's police station with what we've learned from investigators. Police Mugu Odigwe is everywhere. This pretty lady, Mugo, is up at 1 in the morning, right back out, going to somebody else's house. Mugo be having the same coat on, same hat, different shirt, just switching up the scene. Mugo was over. Listen, Mugo, her, shout out to Mugo. Mugo was just at Wendy's late night. Check it out. Just at Wendy's, they got Mugo on the south side of Chicago, everywhere. Look at Mugo. Same hat. Same jacket, different color shirt. And then you switch it up. Mugo, what you, what you got going on? Same hat, same jacket, new turtleneck. Mugo is pretty, too. I like her. They got Mugo out here in these streets, man. <laughs> Mugo is everywhere. <laughs> if I see Mugo, I know it's been a homicide. She going to get that money, too. Shout out to her. Shout out to the pretty girl Mugo. But, bro... Let me tell you something. She had every single scene in Chicago reporting on crime. Oh, she got shot in the face at Wendy's. He was standing up inside of his living room and just realized I got a bullet in my arm. 
That's Mugo there. Say they are still looking for the shooter in this case, but at last check, the 57 year old man who was shot is in the hospital in critical condition. Take a Everybody look at this video. Hospital. You can see at least bullet, two bullet large holes. bullet holes on the front window of this home, which is on South Elizabeth Street. According to Chicago police, the shooting was just before 830 last night. Again, the 57 year old man was standing in the living room of they the make home them do that, Miss Cloud. when shots were fired. He was hit on his left arm. Now, this shooting follows a violent Easter weekend here in Chicago, where police <laughs> say 33 people were shot, seven of them fatally. Wait, 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 wait. I wasn't aware of that. You telling me, because I, I was covering all of the other crime all across of America, right? I see you, Jeffrey Rice. <laughs> I see you. I was, I was paying attention to what was happening in Houston, Atlanta, Miami. I didn't know 33 people were shot in Chicago and seven of them fatally. Why y'all ain't tell me that? Y'all did not send me those stories inside of my email. Y'all know my email address? Only business inquiries and stories. AntonDaniels413 at gmail.com. AntonDaniels413 at gmail.com. Why y'all didn't tell me that 33 people got killed on Resurrection Day? Thirty-three people in Chicago was shot during Resurrection Weekend, and seven of them. This is the first time I'm hearing about it. Cause I said, "Hey, man, remember when I came on Monday and I was like, hey, I heard that Chicago was pretty peaceful this weekend.' It was like, no, Anton. Oh, you gonna learn today? And I tried to talk about it, and this story happened, and that story happened, and this story happened. Y'all thought that y'all was gonna." Hey, I thought that these was just large gatherings. That's what the mayor of Chicago told us. Brandon Johnson, hey, you know what they're going to tell us? Homicides are down. And um, hey, 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 I'm not going to have that. I'm not going to have that. You want to make these people out to be criminals. That's not what they are. These are not people that are just shooting people and stomping on their cars. There's more to the story than that. These are large, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. These are large gatherings from young people who don't have anything else to do. And because the recreation centers are closed, which we have to get those back open, and we're creating a crisis response team to mitigate all of the interactions with each other that may be negative. You mean I'm killing each other, Mary? No. Mitigating the interactions with each other that may be negative. Okay? So I want you to understand this. This is not young people with guns running out with switches killing people. This is a large gathering of people that have not mitigated themselves and then operated in a conducive manner that would be fruitful for the community because they don't have community centers right now. So what we've done is we've contacted the archdiocese and community leaders. Hey, Mayor, did you open up the new precincts over there where y'all close them? We're in the most dangerous neighborhood. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're going to have to let me finish. We're working with the archdiocese to ensure that the migrant crisis is fully funded and as promised, as promised, I will speak with the police officers over there. But did you open, I'm, I'm sorry, I will speak with the police officers to see whether they can be more involved in community and attending playground and basketball tournaments. but we will not label these people criminals. We will absolutely make sure that they have the therapists and the resources and the community involvement from the church to make sure that the next lady don't get shot at Wendy's. <laughs> 33 people.
Again, at last check, that victim is in the hospital in critical condition. Chicago police have not said if he was the intended target in the shooting. They only say they are still investigating and no one has been arrested. In Morgan Park, Mugol Digway, CBS. Shout out to Mugol Digway, but I want to see what's happening on the other side of town. What's going on on the other side of town in Chicago? Happening tonight, a march against violence and a call for action after a... It's a march. So wait a minute. That's how we going to... Stop the violence. Maybe we can come out with a new rap song. Stop the violence. Stop the violence. Stop the violence. <laughs> We're going to march our way to success. Yeah. We're going to do a protest rally. Stop the violence in Chicago. Oh, it don't matter who you vote for. Don't matter about the funding of the police. Never mind the migrant crisis and the resources going over to that. Forget the fact that women are having children out of wedlock and raising single parent homes. Forget the guns. That's on. Forget all of that stuff. We're going to march, y'all. We're twist that. We can get twisted to do a song. Let me play with your emotions, ho. Stop the violence. Stop the violence. Get everybody to come together. Do or die. C crucial conflict. Twister. Kanye. Obama's. Stop the violence. Stop the violence. That's going to stop it. <laughs> That's going to stop it over there in Chicago. Let's do another march and a rally, guys. Let's do a, let's do a community organization where we're going to come together and we're going to... Hey. The, the the criminals be over there watching the Millionaire Morning Show like, look at these fools over there marching again. <laughs> oh. Criminals be chilling like, yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody gone right now, so we're going to go ahead and hit their cribs while we can. Jesus Christ. Let me play with your emotions, ho. Put the rhythm of stop of violence. Put the rhythm of the high hat. I know you want to try that. Number, can you buy that? Where your ride at? Let me play with your emotions. <laughs> now tell me how you going to act, ho. I see you screaming out the back, though. <laughs> what you running from a lack for? Let you on your back slow? <laughs> oh. Hey, in the middle of the barn deadly weekend of shootings on the city's west side. NBC 5's Natalie Martinez shows us tonight there's a push for new approaches to keep Chicagoans safe. They all fear. Praying for peace on west side streets Tuesday night. Violence has continued to happen. Dozens gathered on the 5300 block of West Madison. This is where 19-year-old Ariana Murphy, mm -hmm. one of five women shot here Sunday morning, was killed. We're here to try to find information. I'll see if the community helps. Faith and community leaders joined with police from the 15th district and elected officials that's gonna do passing it. out Faith flyers to homes leaders. and businesses, encouraging witnesses to come forward after another deadly mass shooting on Laverne and Hubbard just hours after Ariana was killed. When we start having these massive shootings, it rings to the core of your heart. Mm. We know that somebody is hurting. They're bringing together stakeholders to collaborate before summer violence starts. We're here to show solidarity, mm. love, mm. and ultimate support. I just want to see the kids live because everybody out here scared, don't want to go to school, don't want to leave their homes. Everyone I, I got you. I know how to fix this. I know how to fix this. I got you. I'm going to show you how to fix it. Give me a second. I was in a mass shooting on Halloween with, uh, on 13th and Pulaski. Taiwan narrowly escaped a mass shooting late last year and is here to help provide peace for all the victims' families who suffered over Easter weekend. I have a 19-year-old daughter. No 19-year-old father should get a phone call saying that her, her, her child has passed. At the end of the day, don't nobody win. Somebody done lost their loved one, another person going to jail for the rest of their life. The Austin community is the awesome community, yeah. and mm. we support our We don't want to hear that. Listen. Listen, legislators in Chicago said that they got a solution for y'all. So they're going to do their solution. I'm going to get my solution. Give me a second. 
Welcome back. It's 416. United States Attorney General Merrick Garland is pledging more support to fight violence here in Chicago. Made that promise while attending a violence intervention conference downtown today. Our Dame Placco with details on that Justice Department plan. Yes, yeah, Scott and Sylvia Garland told a large group of law enforcement and anti-violence workers that uh, progress is being made, but the fight for safer cities, he says, is far from over. Uh, Garland spoke to several hundred people at a Hyatt Regency downtown Chicago as part of the second annual Community Violence Prevention and Intervention Grantee Conference. Garland says nationwide violent crime is reversing the surge that occurred during the pandemic. He says murders dropped 13 percent in 2023, the biggest drop in 50 years. But he says without continued enforcement and intervention programs, that number could easily move in the wrong direction again. To that end, Garland announced a $78 million grant from the Justice Department to fund local violence intervention programs across the country, including mm. here in Chicago. Mm. We have so much more to do. Mm -hmm. The Justice Department will not rest until mm. every person in every neighborhood, in every community, What's is up, safe from Lita? violent crime, and I know that you will not rest either. Hmm. Seven, eight million, huh? Now, the number of murders in Chicago also dropped 13% in 2023 compared to the year before. Just today, the Chicago Police Department releasing some new figures showing the murders dropped 5% in the first three months of 2024 compared to last year. However, there was a spike in the month of March. Don't worry about it. I know how to fix it. That seven, eight million? They put in seven. Where is the seven, eight million going? I'm just curious. Give me a second. Let me figure it out. One, two, buckle my shoe. Three, four, better lock the door. Five, six, seven, D eight million. Seventy eight million. Okay. All right. We could, I could save you seventy seven of them. So I could save you seventy seven. Seventy seven. Give me one, and I'm gonna fix it. I know what the solution is. Leather, straps, put your, put your hands on that bed. You got to get to them young. Because if you don't get to them young, by the time they get too old, it's going to be too late. So you got to put it in them young. Do not spare the rod of correction. Do not spare the rod of correction. Drive the devil far away from thee. It will never. Put your hands on that mother effing bed. This is going to hurt. Hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. Strong fathers. Putting that fear in them before they ever even get to the streets. Because listen, you gotta listen, you don't want to deal with your friends, you want to deal with me. That rod of correction, oh, it's gonna drive it far from thee. Far from thee. Put it in them young. Put it in them young. It will never do. Listen, y'all keep talking about these people are having identity issues. Therapy. Ther Did y'all see the therapist last night? Y'all send y'all kid to that therapist? He had a deep voice, though. He definitely had a deep voice. Yes, because, uh, because guys, because, uh, you know, you, you got to make sure that you, you, substan you make sure that you confirm the bias of women that ultimately, whose sons come up to them and tell them that they gay. I mean, I'm never going to tell my son. I would never tell a family member of mine. You know, I want to know how you feel. What are you attracted to? <sighs> Two. 
too many women are out here raising children by themselves, having children out of wedlock with people that they shouldn't be with in the first place. The men then go to jail, come back, give them AIDS. That's what Judge Joe Brown said. We, let, we don't have to sit here and keep going back and forth. We don't have to sit here and keep going back and forth. It's a very simple solution. It's not rocket science. It's not none of that. It's a very, very easy solution to all of this. We can fix it. We can, we can fix it. Absolutely. I see we got a couple trolls in here. That's good. That's good. That means you can get this work too. How, how, come, how come people that talk the most, they never even have a profile picture? Don't worry about it. We going to get there. We going to get there. We solving for it. We solving for it. We know the devil is working hard. The devil is working hard, but we got solutions for you. 